So, today I got a bit of a simpler video for you. A little bit of a DIY. Putting one of these guys in the bulbo here. Because, if you're anything like myself, you like your old cars. Naturally, they're a good time. They're simple. Certain ways, simplicity will get to you. This guy here, your cigarette lighter, of course. It's useful if you're a frequent cigarette smoker, of course. I am not, personally. So, that for me is useless. So, what I buy is these voltmeter slash USB outlets. So, it shows me voltage. And now I have USBs because we're in a bit more modern day amenities now. And this thing never came factory with a voltmeter. So, it's a bit nice to have that peace of mind, know how many volts it's making. So, it's a pretty simple DIY. This video will not be Volvo specific, but if you have a 240, it's a pretty easy one for you. So I'll start off by just taking off this faceplate here. I already have the bolts loosened, of course, for ease of operation. Take out those Phillips and those flatheads on the sides. Plastic trim tie down pins. These guys. Then put it back so I can remove this faceplate here. I kind of just pull it out a little bit, and you'll see, I don't know if you can see from the camera, but there's just two little spade connectors. Let's see if we can get you down in there. Two little spade connectors on the back of this cigarette. There's a whole harness back here, of course, for all your plugs and everything. But back here, get rid of that cigarette lighter, so I'll just pull that guy off and try and get this snug one off here. There we are. And then the next step is getting out this guy itself. Should be pretty simple, but I'm gonna set you up for this one. But, we'll see. Of course, I have all of these in my other cars, like there's one in the RX-7, there's one in the Miata. I'm a big fan of my voltmeters and USB combinations because none of these vehicles are new enough to come with either of those. Well, wasn't so bad. Uh, they're a press fitting style in the 240s, so I actually ended up taking the step bit, lodged it in there, and I drilled it out until it kind of melted its way out. But if you'll notice, this guy's a little bit bigger than your factory hole, so I took the step bit and reamed out a little bit, and then it mostly just fits in there. I do like a firm fit personally, so I like it to fit a little bit tight in there, just like that. Nice, perfect finish, decent. It'll come with this massive nut that goes in the back. So just screw that on, just hand, like, using your hand to tighten. There's no need for any sort of wrenches unless she gets jammed up, which it seems like it wants to. And then we're back to those two spade connectors. So you have one here. It's doubling with the open spade is the ground. This black and yellow here is a positive. If you'd like to, you can use a voltmeter. It's fairly easy. I'll show you how to use that now. So you have your standard voltmeter here. So you can see I have it on the bridge connection. We'll just put over 12 volts. It's reading millivolts right now, of course. And then I'll stick it in what I had called the ground before. If you test in a reverse polarity, you will not hurt the voltmeter in any way, shape, or form. So ground in there, positive, voltmeter, turn the key. Right now we're getting 12.2 because the car's off, of course. Boom. If you, if you did have the leads reversed, I'll show you what will happen. All you'll get is a completely negative signal. Just like that. That little dash there, all you'll get is a negative signal. It will not hurt the voltmeter. Or will it drastically hurt your car anyway? Get the voltmeter out of here now. Then, on the back of your USB voltmeter converter, I should have showed you, but there is a positive and a negative print on the back of this. So I'll take the negative on the negative terminal. And sadly enough, my factory positive terminal is actually too small to slide over that. They're made slightly smaller for safety reasons, so you can't reverse them, of course. 
just go out, cut that wire off, give her all these factory connections, you know. And we'll trim that guy up a little bit. Just enough so I can get on uh, the new spade. Not too much, not too little. We'll slide on some heat shrink, just in case this somewhat cheap quality crimp that they send you happens to fall apart, which they do pretty often. No worries. Just a simple fix. Slide over the wire. And then I'm not a big crimper guy. They work. They're handy. But I actually like my needle nose vice grips here. Any vice grips will work. But I like my needle nose. They put all the pressure right at the tip there. Get pretty crimped on there. And we'll tighten it up a little bit. And we'll get it really crimped on there. Because the last thing you want is this thing popping off. Once again, it won't hurt anything. It'll just pop the fuse. But it's not a positive. Give her a tug. She's in there pretty well. It's moving the whole spade back and forth. Then slide over my heat shrink just for peace of mind, really. I'm going to put a little bit too much heat on this one just because it's going over a pretty big connection here. Guess the lighters won't shut off. There we go. Heat shrink's on there. Make sure to let it cool down, of course. Now, bit of my fault here. It does shrink the blue connection itself. I didn't realize they were, these were shrinking covers. So they're not as bad as I had originally thought. But... That causes a bit of a problem for sliding over the spade. You can trim it. Or you can get it hot enough to stretch over. And it's as simple as plugging the spade on there. So, as I'm sure you can tell, it's a different time of the day. I don't know what's happening on my phone, but it's having a bit of a problem with keeping recordings stored. So, we'll look into that one. Maybe I'll need more storage here soon. But we got her all mounted up. Face plates back on. The dash put back together. Looking as good as it always does. Works pretty well. This voltage with the car just turned on. Accessory mode. Give her some crankage. Here we go. It's a bit bright in the video, but it's not that bad in person, trust me. It, it blends in with the other green lights and everything. We've got 13.7 while we're on, 13.8. USB ports work amazingly. That's about it for this one. It's a, just a real simple DIY update to your, well, my garbage box, but to your possible class car retro build, you know, just a great addition. Don't get me wrong, a classic cigarette lighter, I still have it in here somewhere. A classic cigarette lighter is cool, but it's not really that useful for me. I like my, my voltage, of course, especially in something somewhat untrustworthy, shall I say. Good to see voltage. Nice to have modern USB ports instead of a cigarette lighter. All in good fun. If you made it this far, thanks for sticking around. Appreciate you. Come again for the next one.